Okay, and welcome back to another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Now, Tesla coil season is pretty much over. I can go back to doing videos in my room. So anyway, what we're looking at here is a flyback well, ZVS flyback driver using IGBTs. Now, originally I was going to use this heatsink with just two IGBTs, but because I've got four of these, I decided, you know, I might just as well use a much bigger heatsink and put all four of them on there, which is what I've done. And this seems to work. I've only got this running on my little puny bench power supply at the moment, so it's not going to produce any big arcs, but... I've also got my meter hooked up to one of the IGBTs, so we can see what the frequency is, and... You can see that is working. Alright, about 28 kilohertz. Still a little bit higher than what I would have wanted, but... There we go. I'm not exactly sure what the voltage is, but that's at about 2 amps. 2 amps input. So that's really going to be pulling the voltage down. So, in true Cool Do Clem's Electronic Workshop tradition, now we've done the low power test, it's time to step this thing up. And I'll get this wire out of the way because uh, it's not supposed to be there. So, now running it from this transformer, which is a 26026 transformer, so we've got 26 volts here, 26 volts here, and uh, 52, I think, between there and there. And of course, this transformer is running ballasted, so I can control the amount of power that's going through it. So, let's see what we get with this transformer. Thought I saw some smoke then, but that is much better. Nice long arcs. Alright, let's do a temperature reading. Still cold. So this is only 26 volts, well, it's probably more like 36 when it's rectified, but that's getting quite a nice voltage out of that. Nice, nice long arcs too. Well, let's see this with the lights lower. And let me remind you, I'm running this transformer ballasted, and that was at its lowest setting, so, uh... Those are some really nice arcs. Let's just zoom in on that. Zoom in on the hot plasma action. Uh, it's not even warm yet, so let's go with a little bit more power. It's beautiful. This flyback is really good for uh, um, ZVS. So, this all appears to be working pretty good. Although, the weird thing is, I had terrible trouble actually making this thing work. It just would not oscillate the first time I built this. And I tried, you know, I was going over with a fine tooth comb, trying to see if I'd misconnected something or something. Even went through replacing the diodes, thinking the diodes that I used might not have been fast enough. And then I was fearing that one of the IGBTs had failed. But, turns out that the inductor was the problem. Yep. Yeah. Even though I'd made an inductor, which is this one here, which is in the range where it should be, that one just didn't work. So I'm using this one here, this weird sort of transformery thing, as my inductor, which is way more than what the schematic recommends, but it works with this one and works pretty well, so that's what I'm going with. Actually, this heatsink has had a lot of use just recently. I mean, just earlier this week, I found a schematic for a base-fed solid-state Tesla coil, which I built up, and I used this as the heatsink, 
Now I've built base-fed Tesla coils in the past, but they've always been ones using valves, and although the ones I've made using valves often work pretty good, I've never been able to get audio modulation to work. Just to show you, here's an unused clip from Tesla Coil 2 Bay 5, I think it was, where I again tried to make the audio modulation work, but... So that was a bit of a fail, so that's why I didn't include it. But as for the solid state base fed Tesla coil, well, you're going to have to wait for the next Tesla coil on Tuesday because, well, I don't want to show any spoilers. And yes, I know last time I said that was the last Tesla coil Tuesday I'm going to do, but, you know, this one kind of popped up unexpectedly, so that one will be the last Tesla coil Tuesday for a while. And then I'll get on with the really big Tesla coil that I want to do. But anyway, in the meantime, back to this. Now this transformer, with this transformer it was pulling the voltage down to about 17 volts, which would be about 23 volts when it's rectified. So now I'm going to run it on the bigger transformer, which is this one. Now because now we're going to be running this on about 50 volts, or up to 50 volts, because I'm still running this transformer ballasted, I'm actually running the gates on a separate supply, so the gates are being run on my homemade power supply on this. Well, let's just see what kind of a result we get with this transformer. That's looking good. This is on the lowest setting. Right, that's with the ballast set to its lowest setting now. We're going to step it up to its full power in the dark. Nice flame-like arc. I just realized you can barely see that. It's sort of almost out of the shot. I should really discharge this flyback before I try to move it. But you know me, I'm stupid. Yeah, there was just a little tiny bit of charge on there actually because I saw a little spark. So let's do one more run. People fear when I do this kind of stuff. Because they think I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm mad! Well, something's... Something let out the magic smoke and it wasn't my IGBTs. It was one of the leads going to my meter, so I could measure the current. I th I think that was a little bit too much for it. So, oops, there goes the lead. The IGBTs didn't really get very warm at all. And now, I'm going to step this thing up even further. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to do that, but the thing is, with the ballast connected to the transformer here that's providing the power, that's limiting the voltage that gets into here to only about 35 volts. So, I've got a switch that defeats the ballast, and I just tried drawing some arcs from this, and I got some monster arcs. Unfortunately, the camera wasn't recording when I thought it was, so we're going to run that again so you can see just what this thing can do. So here we go. Time for some monster arcs. I just want to make sure my flyback's okay, make sure it's not getting over hot, so we're going to do that some more. And one more time. Yeah. 
I don't really want to subject my flyback to too much of that because that is my best flyback. But maybe just one more, yeah? And I threw, decided to throw an extra one for just uh, just the heck of it. So that was about 50 volts. God only knows how many amps. Let's just test my IGBT. It's warm, but not hot. Mind you, after that, I'm not surprised. So there we go. There's my IGBT ZVS driver. Works pretty good. Now, usually I put in a schematic, but I don't really think there's any point because this is just the ordinary ZVS flyback driver circuit, except I've replaced the MOSFETs with IGBTs. And also I've paired them up, so I've got these two in parallel, and then these two in parallel, and that's basically it. Anyway, until next time, goodbye.